Hello, St. Matthew's United Methodist Church, and uh, everybody else who's joining us online. Uh, I'm Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. I'm so glad y'all are with us today. Um, oh, you know what I didn't say last week? What? I was super excited about what we were going to talk about. Like which week? I right. I need that on like a that should be like my bumper sticker so slogan excited. thing, bro. Like Christmas, Kelly. What'd you get? I got a cup that says I'm so excited to talk about this thing this week. Um, however, uh, sermon was great. We talked about abundance, uh, and we talked about kind of God. Uh, Wait, what did you not say last week? What did I not? Say? Oh, that I was so excited. Oh, okay, I was so excited about what we were going to talk about. <laughs> And now that I think about it, I'm trying to think of the last time I said that before podcast, because like you were there for the week before, uh -huh. and then Ray did the one before uh -huh. that, uh -huh. and so I got to get a new catchphrase. Anyway, um, so uh, we talked about abundance, yeah. and we talked about kind of Jesus in the midst of that, and how Jesus uh, does that in, in our midst, and, and with us, for us, and for others. Um, and so we came out of, you came out of Luke 5? Mm-hmm. One through eleven. That's right. See, I can remember things, <laughs> uh, and and I loved it. Uh, I um, uh, y'all. So we're recording this, you know, as proof of life. Um, whenever uh, Dave's preaching, I'm in the back taking notes or like trying to figure out what we're gonna do for the podcast, right? And there's weeks where uh, I'm absolutely, I'm always engaged. I'm always engaged. Um, and then there's some weeks where like the things you're saying, like really resonate with me on a, on a, on a different level. Um, and I'm like, man, like I'm, I'm, I like took so many notes that I had to like, I had to like cut things before today. Um, but I loved your message yesterday. I thought it was, it was stellar. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about it. So without further ado, Dave, can you more eloquently and <laughs> summarize Essentially what you, uh, hey, Jesus is here too. Uh, can you kind of share with everybody what you preached on and, and what you were up to? Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about neighboring, and one of the, uh, we're calling it one of the key ingredients of neighboring is abundance. Uh, so we started with the passage from, of the, you know, abundant, of the abundant catch, the extravagant catch of fish, uh, where Jesus uh, uh, meets the disciples and he has them kind of push the boat out from the shore so he can he right. can teach the to the crowds and then once the uh, 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 his teaching is done he tells the disciples well let's go out a little bit further and drop your nets again you know and they'd been working all night they hadn't caught any fish they'd been cleaning their nets they were you know ready to pack it in and he's telling them well no put your nets out again um, and when they do the nets are filled. Uh, to the point where they, you know, they pull the fish in and there's so much fish that it's sinking the boat, you know, so they're freaking out. They're getting all of this. Um, but what's what's happening here is Jesus is using what they're good at, fishing, even though they haven't caught today. We have to assume <laughs> they that, were good that, at that it. They were good day. at it. <laughs> um, so he's using what they're what they're good at, where their passion is, what their you know where their gifts lie, and then he's teaching them about abundance and mm. in using the things that they are they are good at, and that's really kind of where this fits into neighboring, um, using abundance to to neighbor. Mm. Um, you know, in the church we talk about you know, we really work in kind of a scarcity mindset or technique more than than mm -hmm. not and we're, we're looking for people who need help and you know we, we have help to give and and all of those kind of things but if you ask people you know what is it that you need i'll just pause and ask everybody who's listening what what is it that you need um if you're being kind of on a serious <laughs> uh you know somebody you know is asking you that you're probably going to say you know i don't need anything i'm, I'm good uh mm -hmm. and so when we're using that technique to kind of reach our neighbors they're going to answer the same way Right. Uh, but if we use a technique of abundance where we're looking to see, well, what are you good at? Where are your passions? Mm -hmm. You know, that, and that's a good thing. What are you passionate about? And then, you know, how can we share that passion? How can we share right. that abundance that you have instead of looking for the scarcity that, uh, that you may or may not have? Um, and so that leads into, you know, if, if in the ideal kind of sense, if, if all of our neighbors are, are, sharing their abundance, 
um, then that's we're beginning to look more like the kingdom than before. Um, and so it's really, especially for those in the church, uh, often this is a kind of a, a shift, mm-hmm. uh, almost 180 degrees different. If we, Instead of looking for scarcity in ways that we can help and come in and kind of save the day and, and whatever that looks like, if we can be looking to share in the passion uh, of our neighbors and sharing our passions as well, that looks different. Um, mm. and, uh, is really where we're coming at in this key to neighboring. Yeah. That's a pretty, um, groundbreaking. <laughs> I, I, quick caveat. I, I can't stand like the buzzwords. It's like true discipleship. I'm like, just, just disciple. <laughs> like, right. What does it even mean? Right. Like the, those types of things. But, but in that, right. Like the concept of, you don't come in like a superhero and save the day, right? You come at it ground level and peer to peer. And uh, whether somebody believes or not, understanding that they have inherent worth and value and they have abundance of things to share. Um, I think one of the other things that's really hard, scarcity mindset, right, is not just about what people don't have, but also that like we, right? Like as we as the church, we assume that people are lacking and it's like, oh, um, as opposed to like, hey, we have something to share. We want to share it with you. Um, it's a so much more humility in that. Um, and also uh, conversely, the other side of that too, I think is other people have things to share too. Um, that's something I think that's really difficult, at least in my life is I love to bless other people, mm-hmm. love to be helpful. I love to do things. And then somebody's like, Hey Kelly, let's give you compliments. I'm like, bye. I'm out like peace. Like I'm ready to go on and do the next thing. Um, but I think healthy community healthy kingdom, Mm -hmm. living into that abundance we're talking about is it's a community effort where people are blessing each other Mm -hmm. and you're living abundantly with one another. And it's in doing that, um, frankly, my experience in the context we're discussing, um, not what I understood. It's not how I grew up. It's not how I was raised. It's not, I didn't, I, it was like always about what you gave away and what you could do for other people because they needed things or needed something, right? As opposed to, oh, but they also have things to share that are also great. Right. And they're really cool. And so it's being a blessing and being blessed back and Mm -hmm. forth, right? It's, Mm -hmm. it's a neat, it's a different concept. (laughs) It is. Yeah. If we're working in the place where we are gifted, if we're working in the place where we have passion, you know, the spirit's already kind of working in that. And if we have outlets to, to share that with others, I mean, it, it Mm -hmm. makes us feel you know, fulfilled. We're, right. we're, 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 we're in the spot where we're supposed to be. Right. If, if we're doing that. Yeah. I, I, something I want to add to that too is, um, so for me, like the word permission is really important. And so for a long time, cause I'm a nerd. Hi nerd. Um, for a long time, my hobbies are the things that I enjoyed to do. Um, the way that I understood them was they were, it wasn't necessarily that they were anti-God, but like the Christian me existed in a space and then the hobby me and the, and the other things I was passionate mm-hmm. about existed in a different space. They didn't, they weren't like the same person. Right. And so we say things, um, you know, Christian vocabulary, right? We say things like be your authentic self, go love the world, like live in the world and like it, it not as of it. Right. But like love people, um, where you are. And then like, people would tell me like, but you're not allowed to be there and you shouldn't be there. Or like, you can't use that because you can't glorify God with dungeons and dragons, you know? And I'm like, well, then which one is it? Cause this is the community I'm part Mm -hmm. of. These are the people that I'm connected to. These are the people that I have real relationships with. And like, you're telling me that like, I'm not supposed to be here. Like where did, what gives, right? Like Mm -hmm. which one is it supposed to be? And, um, that's a pretty common experience in circles I'm in too. Of like people are like, I don't, I never had a space where I could do both. And what's fascinating um, is because we're talking about the concept of your hobbies and your passions and what are you passionate about and trying to put qualifiers on that of like, well, is this is this kingdom minded? Like, can I can I care about a hobby and things? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and I go well. And the question I would ask myself and and others is, um, are you loving people there? You sharing? Do you care about them? Mm-hmm. You, because you'll find, I think, as you do community with people, whether it's in uh, uh, 
the walls of a church, which is also wonderful, or it's out in your neighborhood, or it's in the places where you have these these intersections of of circles of influence or people you're connected to, you know, if you bond over something and you act out your Christian faith or you treat people like Jesus would treat them and you love them well, you'll find yourself doing ministry the whole time. Um, you know, it's called uh, loving people and <laughs> avoiding them. And you'll find, I think, too, that whether people believe what you believe, they'll confide in you about stuff and and you can support them and They'll get to know you and what you believe, and they'll still be accepting of that. And it's a neat thing when we just like live our lives mm -hmm. and we just treat each other well. It's 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 a neat concept. Yeah. Um. So we talked about abundance. Now let's talk about. Um. Or we talked about purpose and, and hobbies and living authentically, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think is abundance is kind of what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of further abundance for a sec, though. So you, so you mentioned hobbies and passions. Um. If you were going to put, like, if God gave you abundantly to to live your life and, and to share Jesus with people, what are some of the things you would put in the category of abundance? Oh, any, any, anything that you are you find that you have talent for, mm -hmm. uh, anything that certainly that you have a passion about. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you really feel strongly about a group of people, children or homeless or, mm -hmm. um, you know, then that's, that's should clue you in on, <laughs> <laughs> this is how God's working in you, you know, that you're passionate about these, mm -hmm. these group of, uh, of folks. And it could be any, you know, group of folks, everyone needs to hear this. Um, you know, certainly, you know, your resources, your, your, your money is part of that. Mm -hmm. Your, your, you know, it's, it's, Unfortunately, it's something that we focus on probably far too much, out kind of out of out of balance. But if we are giving of our whole selves, whatever it is that we we possess, um, you know those those things that we enjoy doing, you know our hobbies, even if they seem like games or seem frivolous in some way, <laughs> you know, but you're connecting with people in the uh -huh. process, um, then then that's significant, right? Um, and that that can be used, right? Um, and so realizing that God has given us an abundance in all of those areas, you know, the, the sum total of who we are is, is an abundant mm -hmm. uh, kind of gift that God has given us. And using that, that, you know, defining abundance in that way and not in a comparison kind of way. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I have more, so I'm, a, you know, I'm a abundant in some one of those categories. Right. Um, you know, when the comparison thing is, is kind of leads down some dark roads. Uh, but the uh, in in defining what we have as abundant, whatever that is, um, it's what God has given us to to put to use within the kingdom and mm -hmm. uh, uh, sharing with our neighbors fulfills you know the the Jesus uh, command of loving our neighbor as ourself. Mm. Um, really, kind of brings that into view too. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, y'all, abundance means every part of your personhood <laughs> right well, well it, it means to it, it trains us to see what God has given us as enough um, as as uh, as enough to do the work that God has given us to do mm. um, and it's not the you know we say abundant maybe we're saying that the, you know it's more than somebody else or, or what have you and that's where I'm trying to to focus on getting us to change to say whatever God has given you you can work with that. Mm -hmm. And God expects you to work with that, and yeah. and it's going to be abundant, mm -hmm. um, abundantly enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so real quick before we move into scarcity, because I want us to really get a good idea of the comparison you kind of started to alluding to. So, um, what I'm not saying, and I'm not going to speak for Dave, but I'm you'll watch his head go. Uh huh. Is you know when we talk about what God has given you. I'm not talking about like productivity and if you do good things or did the right things, then God's going to give you more or less, right? Like this is a tricky slope because there's believers I know and, and people I know that have this perspective of God, non-believers too, where they have this perspective of God of like, well, if you do the right things, then you'll get rewarded and you'll have stuff. And if you have stuff, then you're living abundantly. And if you're living abundantly, then you can give more or do more. And I go, no. Mm -mm. not solving the cosmic equation of like why do good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people and like if you work hard enough and do the right stuff then god will give you stuff that's not what i'm saying at all what i'm getting at um is 
you have a life. You ha- you you are, ha- can have a relationship with God, and, and out of that relationship of God, you can do quote unquote inventory of your life of going, what do I have access to? What does my life have in it? What do I care about? What am I drawn to? And how can I go be love and, and share the love of God in those spaces? And that includes all of the things we mentioned. It can include your finances. It, it can include your resources, include your talents and your times and your gifts um, and all those different things. But what I'm not saying is um, that weird prosperity thing that sometimes people lean into. Mm-hmm. So hear that clearly. Um because I think sometimes if we're not careful, like people, like you can hear that and go, oh, like then if I do the, like, then my life will be easy or God will give me all this stuff and then I can go do. And I'm like, Mm-mm. Um, when I read the gospels or I read the scriptures, sometimes the people that are doing a lot of work are doing it in some really difficult circumstances. Um, so if you're in a season of life where like things are really hard or you don't have quote unquote, what you would consider a lot of resource, um, what we're trying to get you focus on is what you have, not what you don't have. Um, and this isn't a mystical equation of like, if you do the right stuff, then you'll have more. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's not it. No, no, because that, that leads you to the the other fallacy, which is if you don't have anything, then you've done something wrong. You haven't been living up. That's to, not grace. You, no, that's not grace. That's not, not how all. that works. Not at all. Um, so yeah, it leads you into all kind of, weird kind of situations that, that uh, are not where God wants you to be. Yeah. And, um, and they, and, and in turn, I think too, and let's move into scarcity here. So, so that lends itself. That's a really slippery slope into this scarcity conversation. We're going to talk about where you, you stop living freely and authentically and you start living fearfully and comparatively, mm-hmm. right? Like, so you start going, well, what, a like oh, something I hear from youth, Oh, youth or young people all the time. is like, well, one day I can be effective. And I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? Like, if I can be effective, you can be effective, right? Um, so we start doing the thing, well, like when I get older or when I have more money or when I have more time or I have more gifts or I like, or I grow up, like all this stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Abundant you is now you. It's it's wherever you're at. And, and But scarcity or fear right, moves us into this place of like, oh, like you don't have and somebody else has. So, well, you know what? Dave's a pastor. So Dave's qualified to do this. So we'll let Dave do it because Dave knows what he's doing. Dave does know what he's doing, but (laughs) Dave isn't the only one who's supposed to be doing stuff, right? right. Like, um, and so in that, right, like I, I think when we start talking about scarcity, it's it can also be hyper fixated on money. And that's part of it, but it's not the only thing. It's like, no, like Dungeons and Dragons, nerd stuff, like whatever the community is and whatever you're passionate about, right? Like it's not about what you don't have. Um, and then I think another thing too is like, don't compare yourself to other people. Don't do that. Like if there's people around you that like are good at things you want to be good at, or things you feel drawn to, sure, hit your wagon. You're like, uh, I do it all the time. That's why I hang out with Dave. Um, I'm like, oh, Dave, you're really good at this pastor thing. Uh, teach me. Uh, um, but that's not because I'm a terrible pastor, or I can't also do the things that I care about or I feel called to. It just means I've met somebody who like, oh, that I like that. I want to. I want to implement that too. Um, but that scarcity mindset is is mm-hmm. deadly. Mm-hmm. It's and it's something that's you know deadly for churches, uh, you know if if we get into the point where we think well if we only had you know more people more money more facilities more whatever and then we could make a difference in the world, we're, we're discounting God, you know. So that scarcity mindset has has forced us or has caused us to turn our attention from God to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, the God in the in the Gospels is the one who fills the nets to abundance. Mm. I took my punchline, Dave. <laughs> that 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 fills nets, really. Um, so if we're turning our attention to us and saying, "What can we do with our meager, you know, resources mm-hmm. as we see it?" instead of saying, "Well, God has blessed us in 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 so many ways," right? Uh, what is God calling us to do with these resources and these, you know, all of this talent that we have, or this location that we're in, or these, you know, facilities, whatever? 
you know, fill in the blank for, for your church. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've, we've, we've lost the good news. We've, we've turned it upside down and backwards. Yeah. Cause then it's, then it's human power. It's human effort. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, like, so you're talking about the fish. And so one of my favorite parts in this account, right. Is Jesus is like, no, no, no. I know you've been working all night and then you just listen to me talk. Cause right. He's, he preaches from the boat, but they, they don't say what he says, which I'm like, that's also weird. Like, just what did he say? Um, well, we know what he said. He, 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 yeah. he, he talked about grace. He yeah. talked about God. He <laughs> talked about... He did Jesus things. He did that Jesus stuff that, uh, just, that he does. He lived authentically. <laughs> uh, 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 one day we're going to have like a tally. I'm going to have like a little whiteboard that says whatever we say authentic. I'm just going to like <laughs> tick it. Um, or grace. Lots of, lots tick, of tick, grace. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> um, but in that, but in that, right? So, so they've been doing all this stuff and then... They were all prepared to like leave there. And then Jesus is like, no, 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 come on. And then they go out on the boats again. And then Jesus says fish. And they haven't been able to catch anything. Now, one of the reasons I love that Jesus uses fishing all the time, it's like a thing with Jesus, is have you ever, you've been fishing, right? Sure. How predictable is fishing? <laughs> when I go, not very. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've, I've fished with people who are really good. And mm-hmm. sometimes you just don't catch anything. Mm-hmm. And so for Jesus to do all this and then go, nah, right there. And then all of a sudden they're like, we're going to drown out here. We can't even fit all these fish on the boat. Like, I'm like, so you take an uncontrollable element and thing, and then you go, oh, abundance. And I'm like, that's fascinating. Which to me is is not to put fear or insecurity in, a, in people or a person in our in our ability or what we can offer or what we can do. Um, but it's meant to, I think it's meant to also kind of put us in the place of like, God is God and we're, we get to play a part that God has invited us into. Um, but God brings the harvest. God brings the fish. We do what we can with what we have. And that's, that's, it's one of the things that's so hard about this for me is it's like, it's more than enough or it's good enough or it's this or it's that. And I go, I think the truth is more of a, if you're being you, that's how it's intended to be. Mm -hmm. Just live out your intention and your authenticity. And in that God does abundant work. Um, They couldn't get the fish in the nets. They're professional fishermen. Like them and their families all die if they can't fish because they starve and they can't catch anything. And Jesus is like, nah, here. And I love that. Um, I also think of the, the, uh, what is it? The two loaves and the, it's no, no, no. It's two fish, five loaves, right? No, the other way around. Other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally not (laughs) abundant, Uh, abundant. And, and they're like, we can't possibly do the things you're saying we're going to be able to do with Uh this stuff. And Jesus Uh goes, watch this. (laughs) Boom. And then they just start feeding everybody. And I think it's such a, such a cool and, and, and important thing to take from that is like, you do what God is asking with what you have because that's what God wants to use. God isn't calling people because you're lacking or one day when you get to the other dot, <laughs> that's church speak for like, get on your dot and do what you need to do, and then God will give you more. It's Jesus being like, no, <laughs> just do what you do and like watch. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Mm-hmm. I think it's so powerful. I think it's so freeing. It's like, oh God, like I just got to do my part and like you do the rest. Um, cool. Well, but you know, part of the series is that we have to be intentional about this. So if mm-hmm. we're, if we're, um, uh, in our neighborhood and we don't know the names, even the names of any of the neighbors that we can see from our front door, right? You know, the, this this uh, uh, series is about being intentional, about making those connections and, oh, and you know, metaphorically opening those doors uh, to get to know and create, you know, relationship with our neighbors. And if we can help our neighbors to see where they're, uh, you know, where they're gifted, where their abundance lies, um, not only, uh, you know, are we sharing ours, but if we can open the door to help them share theirs you know, then they get to feel the, you know, the, 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 the power of, of using your, of, uh, gifts and your passions and putting those to use. Um, and that's, you know, 
And so being intentional about it is is really what we're focusing on here in this in this whole series. Yeah, so so all the things I'm saying too, like one of the I think another slippery slope of this, right, is it can be very egocentric. It can be very like isolated and that's not what I'm that's not what I'm trying to say. And so when you think about it too, like I think about this fishing analogy where Jesus is like catch the fish, right? Um somebody there knows how to cook the fish. Somebody there has the utensils or can build the fire. And so everybody plays a part in the blessing of the abundance that God has provided. Mm-hmm as opposed to I do all the parts or they do all the parts or whatever. So when you're living with intentionality of your authenticity, right, your authentic self and, and what you've been called to or, or what you're passionate about, right, and as those, those things overlap, right, and, the, and you, you come in contact with other people, remember it's not about assimilating other people into everything you care about. It's about holding space for other people to bring what they care about as well. And that's a, that's a really holistic representation, I think, of the family of God, where it's like, oh, so for example, I grew up playing sports. No. (laughs) And it's not because Dave wouldn't have been a great athlete, but like a place where there's commonality there is like Dave and I can talk about some sports because Dave's like really big into college football. Um, I'm not really, but like I've asked Dave and you've told me about it and you care about it, right? And, and, And we joke about that, but like that means that like I played, and that's not a world you really fully understand or know, but it doesn't mean that you can't have space in those conversations to talk about what you care about or what you're passionate about, right? Mm -hmm. And so the other thing is, is like, you're not just doing the things you're passionate about and care about and forgetting everybody else. If you go outside and you look at where your neighborhood is and where your neighbors are, um, you're also going to probably intentionally try to make an investment into what they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then you're you're connecting with people, right? Um, and and well, uh, a concrete example that I used in the in the message yesterday was: say you you meet somebody, you meet your neighbor, you learn that they're they love playing banjo, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, you know, so you know, keep that in mind. That's their passion. That's what they're good at. That's what they like to do. Uh, you're not gonna you know ask them to, you know to do something else necessarily. I mean, it'd be great. You'd tap into to their passions if you ask them to play the banjo at your birthday party that's next week, you know, right? or, or, or something along that, uh, you know, in that line, invite them to use the thing that they're passionate about. Pay attention mm-hmm. to the, you know, to the abundance that is there in their lives. And, and how can you encourage the use of that? Right. Um, so paying attention, I mean, in that way, you're really connecting uh, in a in a healthy way with with those others, you're listening, you're, right. you're keeping track of all of that. Then you're helping them to uh, to use. You're encouraging them to use their uh, passions in a way that they can share with others. Hundred percent. And mm-hmm. I think something else you said Sunday that I really loved as well was you talked about asking questions. Um. So before, uh, uh, so Dave's really good at asking questions. I'm okay at asking questions. Um, and something that, uh, was always important for me as we've interacted too, is, is Dave will ask me about what I think about something or what I care about. Right. And so that invite, that gives me permission to then talk about what I'm passionate about or talk about what I care about. Sure. And so one of the things that's really important in, I think, an application of what we're discussing in abundance and living into that community sense um, and, and not avoiding scarcity, like, like purposely avoid scarcity, purposely live into abundance and then scarcity is not an issue, but, um, you don't just go up to people and like do the thing you're passionate about and be like, accept me. <laughs> One of the things I think that Christians, it's really important that we do is when you're going and meeting new people, you're asking questions about what they care about. Not so you can manipulate them, right. not so you can take advantage of them or do all this other stuff. It's because you genuinely care about people and you want to know what they care about because you want to encourage and edify that in them. Sure. And you'll find, <laughs> I think, that sometimes if you have a conversation with somebody um, and you're asking them what they're passionate about and what they care about and you learn about that and you... like without lying, right? You're like, man, that's really cool. Like I can't play the, the banjo. Um, you know, then you have opportunities to share what you care about mm-hmm. and then you build relationship 
and then you and then you continue to to leverage each other's gifts and and connect with people in that way. Um, but you go into it with the intentionality of getting to know people and asking questions, mm-hmm. not not bringing that and being like, "You better like this mm-hmm. because it's the thing I care about." Like, no, no, no. Hold space for others. Get to know them first. Yeah. Oh yeah, the whole the whole relationship building. I mean, there's there's uh, you know there's stages to that. There's there's times when. <laughs> Yeah. You know, when, when, when you know somebody well enough to be able to ask them, you know, uh, certain questions, uh, or for favors or for whatever. And then there's times when you just, you, you know, you're just getting to know, you know, what's your name, what's your family, what's your background, mm-hmm. what, you know, what do you do? So there's, there's levels all along the way and, uh, to kind of ignore those kind of social norms kind of leads us into awkward situations. <laughs> Instead of building true, you know, relationships. Yeah. And 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 I think too, like, you know, there's the the joke I grew up with, right? It's like the the three things you don't talk about at Thanksgiving, right? Are politics, money, and religion, right? Are like the three things that you don't discuss. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, as I've grown up, a lot of the superficial part of our culture is the we don't have those deeper or meaningful conversations. Um, because we don't ask. We don't ask what people actually care about. And so I, I have found that pretty consistently, if I ask somebody, I don't necessarily just ask somebody what they do for work. They go, hey, like, what are you passionate about? What do you yeah. care about? Yeah. They, they're going to tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, people people like to talk about and share the things they care about. Um, Maybe unless they've had, like, a really bad experience, and that's fine, but, like... When you start with the things that and you and you value and you value a person because of the things that matter to them, um, building relationships from from those blocks is, I feel like it, you've got a pretty good chance at a successful mm-hmm. like go of it. I, I think you're more in line with what Jesus calls love, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, and loving your neighbor in less words, way more eloquently. <laughs> Kelly, you mean like. The gospel? Like, <laughs> yes, Dave, the gospel. Uh, we were saying the same thing, just in different <laughs> ways. <laughs> but, but right, and so, like, it, it, and and I said permission before, and and um, something I really want to iron here and, like, bring attention to is um, I come from a spiritual culture, and not as much now. Like, my spiritual cultures I've been in more recently— in the last couple of years have been way healthier um, where these things are encouraged. And, mm-hmm. and, and um, but growing up, like those things were considered a waste of time because the MO or, or, or the goal and the ambition was you have to convert people. You have to assimilate people. You have to bring them to your church and you have to do all this other stuff because that's how we viewed success. That was what successful ministry was, was the retention of that. And no, I'm not saying that, People joining a church or baptisms or, or, or people attending isn't isn't good. Of course, those things are wonderful and good, um, but this this thing we're talking about of like living your life intentionally and trying to connect with others and asking them what they care about is gospel. We're not we are not sitting here disassociating those, and then one day, then you have to like sit them down and go, Dave. What's the what's the Nacho Libre line? Like, I'm worried about your salvation and stuff. <laughs> like, like where you're trying to like do yeah. this or that. Like that all happens in the context of the the connection you have and 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 all the other stuff. And so what I'm getting at is living into the things you're passionate about and the people around you that you then become passionate about and holding that space is literally kingdom building. Um. So don't hear it as like. Okay, then Pastor Kelly, when do I bring them to church? And when do I like get them to put money in the plate? Please go to church and please put money in the plate. Like if you want to, right? But like that's not the goal of this. The goal of this is to connect with people in a personal way because they're created in the image of the creator and they're loved by God. And you want to make sure that they they know they are loved and you build relationship from there. That's not a waste of time. You're not like not doing kingdom work. You're not like trying to figure out where you're in is after that. You're literally being Jesus to people if you go do this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is not... 
this is not really, you know, using church words. We're, we're not, really not talking about evangelism. We're talking about discipleship. What do you, you've been using this word a lot recently. Okay. Sorry, and then finish your thought. Uh-huh. Is proselytizing. Yeah. That's the big fancy word. I was yeah. like, I remember the first time he said this, I was like, what the heck does that mean? I should know what this means. I love church words. <laughs> church words yeah. are good. Yeah. <laughs> They're fancy. Yeah. Um. So, so, yeah, proselytizing, you know, is this idea that you're talking about that worried about other folks salvation and, and going to push them into making some kind of decision. Mm-hmm. Really? I feel like whenever we're doing that, we're, we're putting ourselves in God's place because God's going to work on folks mm-hmm. and God's going to bring them around uh, if they're open to that. And if they're, right. they're, they're not, then, then, you know, even God's not going to be able to get in because we have that ability to, to, to have free to say will. No. Yeah. But what we are talking about in, in, this neighboring is about growing in love of neighbor. You know, us, um, we're, we're more concerned about following the commandment of Jesus, um, than, you know, in, in practicing those relationships and growing in our, in our neighborhood. I think if we do that and if we're doing it effectively, then, then yes, we are sharing, uh, in all that God has given to us. And we recognize that God has created that person we're talking to no less and no more than God has created us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so really we're talking about growing in faith by sharing and creating these relationships. Yeah. My, my, I guess, closing thought here is, um, so my, my son is seven. He's going to be eight this year. And, um, one of the, one of the gauges of, um, a successful day or a good day, right, is how well did we uh, love ourselves and love other people today? And I really think it's that simple, is, um, you know, yes, we can talk about all the other things that kind of go into this. When my boy's like, no, I I was intentional. He won't say, like, he was intentional. But, like, I'm, I'm summarizing for him, right? But when he's like, no, I did the best I could to, like, love people and be present and value people today, I'm like, what else is there? Right. And, and so it's, it's, I think because of what I've inherited and people I talk to quite frequently, right? Like all of the different ways that it's supposed to be or this other stuff to get back down to like throwing a net off a boat, Jesus brings the fish and you share it with people and you make sure that you're intentionally trying to find ways that other people feel valued and seen and heard and a part of what's happening because they get to bring what they can bring to. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the gospel. It's it's no more complicated than that. It's also... Um, uh, but I also think why that's so hard is because that is it. Like, it's hard to do that because I'm like, okay, how do I quantify this? How do I qualify this? Like... God, am I doing what I'm supposed to like all this other stuff? And and um, you know, be like my son, who's like, Dad, we just gotta love people. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. I sh- we should just do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, good talk. Yeah. Uh, and let's do that to the to the people who live directly around us. Yes. Um, you yes. know, and those those eight or nine doors, whatever that we can see from our front door, love them. And then let that that circle of love kind of radiate from there. Um, right. It's the best we can do. Right. 100%. This was fun. Yeah. I was very excited about our conversation <laughs> today. Could you tell? Uh, my eyes got all big today. <laughs> Without further ado, though, I'm Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And we will see you on the next one. Bye. Goodbye.